All right, so let's talk about How Children Succeed, written by Paul Tuff. Now, Paul does a lot of professional scientific studies in this book, but I'm going to cover the basics. The first chapter goes over how students and how children fail. He says that students with a higher allostatic load fail more often. An allostatic load is basically a measure of stressful and traumatic events in a child's life. He says that there's one way to counteract by studying rats and how they nurse their younger children. The rats tend to nurture and groom their children, but only some of them. And what they realized was was that the baby rats that received the nurturing and emotional grooming turned out more successful and lived a healthier and what seemed like a happier rat life. He says that IQ is not the only thing that determines success. In fact, he came up with a list of seven things that can determine success. And those are grit, self-control, zest, social intelligence, gratitude, optimism, and curiosity. And of course, he wanted to test some students on this, but there was a big problem. He found that the richer students would have the money and would want to find a way to prepare for this test, when in reality, if you prepare for this test, you are faking it. And he wanted real scores, so it was really hard to test for a lot of these. And what he found was that a lot of students don't have grit, especially richer, more affluent children who did not go through a lot of failure in childhood. And grit is something that is basically perseverance. How hard can the children keep going? You know, it might be pretty easy to apply for college and get into college, but by the time that third year hits, are they going to be strong enough to keep going? Are they going to have the perseverance to keep going? And another thing on self control, he found that this was very important. They did a test. It was called the marshmallow test. And they performed this test by sitting children down and saying, hey, here's a marshmallow. You can eat it if you want to. However, if you wait a mysterious amount of time, we will come back with two marshmallows and you can eat them. And what they found was, through a longitudinal study throughout the entire children's life, those that had the self-control to wait for the two marshmallows were more successful. They had better self-control. He also says that rich kids go to school and they don't see much failure because their parents set them up for success. So when they do see failure in the real world, they fail and they give up quicker. They don't have the skills to get past the failure and stress that underprivileged children get through. And this is where nurturing and grooming emotionally and physically comes in very importantly to how children succeed. Now there was this guy in Hungary, his name was Laszlo Polger. He was an educational psychologist and a Hungarian chess teacher. And he had three daughters. And he took these daughters and he said, all right, I wonder if genius can be taught. So before the age of three, they all started playing chess. He trained them and taught them how to play chess. And this was basically him putting the 10,000 hour rule to the test. And what he learned was that by the age of 15, his daughters were all chess grand masters. He says, any child has the innate capacity to become genius in any field. He also wrote the book, Bring Up Genius, which I'm going to do a book review of soon. I thought it was really interesting. Anyhow, the main point I got out of this book is that it doesn't matter how much stress a child goes through through their life, but it matters if someone is there emotionally and mentally and can help them get through the failure. How well can the children manage failure? Because everyone is going to go through failure. But how well can they manage it? How much self-control and grit? How optimistic are they? How much perseverance do they have? If I had to rate this book on a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being the least recommendable, I would rate this book probably on a 6. Now, there were a ton of awesome ideas that I got out of this book, but a lot of it were scientific studies, and a lot of it was dry reading. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, click the like button below. That's how I can tell which books you guys enjoy reading, and which style of book reviews you guys like watching. And also, if you're going to click the dislike button, leave a comment below explaining why you disliked it, so we both can grow. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, and subscribe for more.